Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, today is Thursday and, and we are having our program Sweet Incense this week. Today, praise God, we're having it today. And, and, and it's, a, it's a program where we bring a sound and a melody to the Lord. Now, God spoke to us a few months ago. He said, you would do this every last last week of the month and you will bring forth a sound unto me. Then by that sound, I'll release my mercy on the earth. So we're going to be doing that this evening by 5.30 p.m. at the Julio Studio in Wuye District in Abuja. The address is on your screen or you can contact us if you if you are finding it difficult to, to get the location, you can contact the number showing on your screen and we someone will get you there. Praise <laughs> God. Gather, let's gather and give God a sound that he will love to hear. Praise <laughs> God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And, and, and this month's theme is the spirit of boldness. I sense in my heart that God is going to be releasing you if you attend this meeting, God's going to be releasing you to go forth and begin to demonstrate his word everywhere you go. So it's going to be a great time of fellowship, a great time of worship and impartation of the spirit of God. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. If you're not in Abuja, you can follow us online. It will be streamed on all our uh, social media platforms, I think. Yeah, on YouTube, on Facebook, and I think on Instagram, it will be... Uh, it will be, we'll, we'll share the, the, the live stream. Praise God. Are you ready to make demand for your daily bread today? Join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Oh, glory to Jesus. Sweet words amazing things we've been talking about all week and listen like i told you yesterday god is bigger than anything you can't tie god to a box no you can't you can't <laughs> you see there there were people i told you yesterday i said I got to the point where, and to a great extent, I still believe that way. Now, for a number of people, okay, that the Bible can become your limitation if you don't understand the purpose of it. Now, that's why I, I try to tell you, I try to sound and say, hey, hey, this book is talking to us about God. And he's not telling us to stay here on this book to know God. He's telling us that there is a God that we need to find. <laughs> That's what the whole Bible is saying. God is true. God exists. And he deals with men. <laughs> it's God. You, you remember Gideon? I kalabashatanam Gideon didn't have any Bible to read. And then one day, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. He said, you are a mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you. Now, how would he have confirmed that to be the word of God? Because you know, sometimes when we say these things, we, we, we don't speak reality. We just, we just speak as though there's a frame that I've been given to us and we are locked inside that frame. So it must follow this pattern. It must be like this. If not, it's not God. Uh, and, and, and I say we've not been able to achieve as much as those who we read about achieve. That's why you hear me say, maybe this is our problem. So the angel said, you're a mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you. How can the Lord be with me? If, uh-huh. I said, go in this your might. And God's going to use it to deliver the people. Huh? Okay. So what do I do? I've got to prove first that God is real. That is really God that's talking to me. And he wants me to do this thing. And he did all the things he did. And God confirmed all the confirmation that he needed to confirm. Think about Menoah. A man just walked up to his wife and said, Hey, you're going to have a son. 
and it's going to be like this and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Okay. The wife came back and says, honey, I, I met a man today and these are the things he said. Say, hey, yeah, I don't doubt you, but you know what? Let's pray. Father, if truly you sent that man of God, can you send him again so that he will tell us? He came back and told them, okay. How will they confirm whether the man is telling them the truth or false? How? Everyone. Abraham. You know, there's this belief that Abraham was an idol worshiper. That's not true. There is nowhere the Bible said Abraham was an idol worshiper. Okay? Now, when you read history and when you read from other books, you find out that even his father was not really an idol worshiper. Truly speaking, his father was involved in making because his father was good in crafts. So, and because the king that reigned in those days um, took him close and made him one of his strongest men. And so, he was now using his craft to service the king. And because of that, just like the man who makes clothes for the king, you know what that means. He automatically, like we say in today's world, he will blow. <laughs> the king's tailor will blow. Why? Because the, the king will wear, ah, wow, this your, this your dress is nice. Ah, see the guy that makes clothes for you. Everybody will want to go there and say, I come and make clothes for me too, for the king to be wearing what you made. Eh? You must be very special. Or oh, yeah, come and make clothes. Now, that's how people that know the king personally would gravitate towards that fellow, okay? And this guy will just realize that every business is doing is to service that area. Now, his other customers say, eh, sorry, sir, um, I, I really can't make it. Can you give it to someone else? So, there's the same way when, when Abraham's terror got close to the king, then the king was into idol worship. And so, he got him now to be making crafts, you know, all those carved stuff to represent their idols. See? And that's how terror was judged to be an idol worshiper, okay? But Abraham was never an idol worshiper. Abraham had a relationship with God. And when you read the story, you see that even Abraham demonstrated boldness before you even heard about his name in Genesis chapter 12. Okay? He, he demonstrated some level of boldness. Go read, go read books. Read the book of Joshua. You know, you, you'll see those things there. And I say, eh, you have come. Say, ah, you, you have come. So, uh, you're carrying us to a book that is out. You see, that's why I tell you. Now, those things give us perspective, okay? Yes. So you just read your Bible and, and the Lord said unto Abraham, get out of your, uh, your country. So what was he doing before God spoke to him? Now, that's where the idea came that he was into idol worship. So how will a man be into idol worship and God will now speak to him? I say, get out from your home, from your hometown to a land that I'll show you. Oh, because there are people who are deep into idol worship. So God had to deliver him out. Now, that's funny to say because, listen, you see, it's good to have sense. It's good to be intelligent. It will help your spirituality. Because when you begin to ask questions, the only problem is people don't know where to table their questions. So you, want, you want to ask men questions. Uh, men cannot answer you. So, if you believe that Abraham was deep, Abraham's family was deep into idol worship. Okay. So God now delivered him from that family line to set up a new race and platform for him, right? Yes. So he obeyed God and he left, right? Yes. He got into this Syrian um, location and then he got into this location and God said, I'll give you this land. Yes. Then he got a son named Isaac, yes. And God now says to Abraham, Abraham, don't allow your son to marry anybody from here. Okay, sir. Where should my son marry from? Go to your hometown. Eh? The idol worship parts. Go to your hometown and choose a, a wife for your son. Okay. Yes. So Abraham called his servant. He said, look, Swear. Now, that's to say that he heard from the Lord. He told him, swear that you will not allow my son to marry from this place. I swear, sir. You will go. He told him where to go to. He didn't just say, apart from it, go to it. He told him exactly where to go to. You will go there and find a wife for my son. And then the, 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 the man said, but what if the woman refused? 
to follow me. He said, then you are free from this oath. Why did Abraham tell him you are free from this oath? Because if God has said we should go there, and then we go there, he does not make a way there, then there's nothing we can do. You know, that's the thing about faith. A lot of people don't understand. Sometimes people fight and struggle with their faith. Okay? They say, God says, I will get that job. And then they write the exam or they, 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 they apply and then they don't get the job. And guess what? They, they begin to go, no, 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 no. They cry and they cry and they cry and they cry. If God told you you will get the job and he cannot make the people at the job give you the job, there is nothing you can do. Is it that you didn't hear God? Or you are missing the timing you know, or you're missing certain facts about that, that, that prophecy or statement. You don't use your faith to want to hold everybody down. No. Praise God. Now that's how you prove that God is dealing with you. So that's why Abraham said to him, because the, the servant asked him a very important question. He says, sir, what if I find the girl? Yes. You know where we are now. The girl refused, because see, okay, you're different too. If the girl refused or her parents refused to let me carry her away from that place, Abraham said, well, you must not take my son away from here. Don't say, because the girl refused, you now come and carry my son and take him there. No, never. If she refused to follow you, then you are free from this hope. Meaning, you can let my son marry whoever he wants to marry. Can you see the reasoning of Abraham? Now, because that was in place, that, that's the right way to reason. Why? Because you, you make God act faster or put his foot down when you, when you, when you reason that way. That's the truth. Now, that's the reason once the servant got there, yeah, the angels had to walk it quick. No drama, no guesswork. He got there and said, Lord, okay, how do I know the wife now? So now, what am I saying? If you say, Abraham came from a family of idol worship. And if you know the place of mothers over the life of a child, <laughs> how influential a mother can be in the life of a child. And God will now tell you to go back to marry a son for your, or marry a wife for your son from the home of idol worship. You are going to turn the next generation into idol worshippers. So you see, the, the statement or that belief that Abraham was from an idol worshipping background is false. Now, it's easy to debunk that. It's easy to look at that and say this, because now you know that uh, uh, even you won't reason that way. You came from a family that is into deep idol worship. You saw, and then somehow God delivered you and you saw the light. And now you now want to go and you want to marry. You now say, no, I can only marry from my tribe, my tribe. And you know that your tribe, it is on record that every girl in that tribe was given from the waters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Now you're born again. Now there are places like that. Praise God. There are places like that. There are families like that. <laughs> that you know that every girl in this family, this this whole clan, every girl from that place, they have one story about their birth. Then you now say, no, see, I must marry from my tribe. You now go and carry one like that. You have thrown your destiny. <laughs> Into the hands of the devil. It's as simple as that. You've thrown away your destiny. Now, it's so in, it was so important that that was the mistake Esau made in his life. Jacob was given the same instruction. Go to your grandfather's place. That's where. Laban. And he went there. Esau. Nah, nah. He married quickly. And that's why, that's why God hated Esau. God didn't hate Esau from birth. He didn't hate him from the womb. He hated him. Actually, it was Malachi that said, I hate, I hate Esau. So God didn't even say he hated Esau while Esau was alive. It's after he was long gone. Because you see this Esau, I hate him. Why? Because he cannot use him. Simple instruction on where to marry so that your children will be preserved as the seed of God. He refused to hack him. So he, he, he got children quite all right, but they were children that were out of God's orientation, out of God's will. 
These things are important. People don't take them seriously, but they are so important. That was the reason God cursed Esau. He said, even if he plants, even if he builds, I will destroy it. It was that bad. God said it in the book of Malachi. He said, I will destroy it. But Jacob sheepishly followed the father's instruction. And like I always say, God kept wife for Esau in Laban's house. Laban had two daughters. Jacob got to that house. I think it was by chance that he fell in love with the younger one. His brother had the elder one waiting for him. And for good seven years, Esau had an opportunity for seven years to go to Laban's house and take the wife that was kept for him. Now, not, not by Laban, of course. But you see, truly speaking, if Esau had come to Laban's house, the equation would have balanced. But he refused. Because that's his mindset. He just wants to do everything opposite. Never, you see, if you have that kind of mindset, it will affect you greatly in life. If you have that mindset that, I don't like being controlled. So when they tell you do A, now, ah, because they say do A, that's why I'll do B. <laughs> you will get into trouble. Because see, in life, you will always be controlled. Problem is, or the, the issue is, who you allow to control you. Nobody can control me. You see, that statement in itself, you didn't make it by yourself. You were giving it to say someone is controlling you and he's the one that is telling you that nobody should control you. <laughs> That's how Satan operates. Satan telling nobody should control you. Why? Because he wants to he wants to give you the impression you're a free agent. You're a free moral agent. You can do what you want. Say, yeah. But hey, that thing that you really want to do came from an influence. Oh yes, it did. So you are still being controlled. So you must willingly guard your mind and hand it over to the Lord to be the one to control you. So when an instruction comes, you're thinking, is this from the Lord? Or is this from my mind? Or is this from the world? Or is this from the devil? And you can, it's easy to reason it out. James told us the wisdom that is from our voice first pure, is peaceable, it's clear. But when you find yourself selfish, no, I'm benefiting from this person. I'm benefiting from this institution. Nobody should come and tell me anything. Now you see you're selfish. So because of your selfish gain, you don't want to obey the instruction that will produce discipline in your life. Leave me alone, everybody should leave me alone. I'll do, I'll do what I like. You are being controlled already. Simple. That's what Esau was. So when Esau heard that he, Jacob was told, go to Uncle Laban's house and go and take a wife there. Eh, eh, I will show them. Me, I'll go and marry another wife. He went to Ishmael's house. Meanwhile, there was a wife in Laban's house and she, she, she waited seven years, brothers and sisters. If Esau had simply flowed, even Jacob wouldn't have had all the issues he had. You understand what I'm talking about? Praise God. I, I pray for you. And God will grant you boldness to do that which is true. Boldness to say no to the devil. Boldness to stand. Even when others are falling, you will find the boldness to stand and see God for yourself and do what he will love you to do. In Jesus' mighty name that I pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm looking forward to seeing you today, this evening by 5.30 p.m. The address is showing on your screen right now don't miss sweet incense for anything god bless you i'll see you tomorrow bye